All right, we have more changes unfolding in the swamp of Washington, D.C. Changes that have new details leaking out of FEMA. Damning details about why the federal government's response to Hurricane Aline has been so poorly executed. Realize, Aline hit 11 days ago. 11 days have passed and there are still countless people unaccounted for. Families still can't get answers. 170,000 residents are still without power and the progress that is being made isn't coming from the federal government. It's coming from volunteers and local recovery teams who are doing an amazing job, by the way. But FEMA, what we've seen has been likely the worst federal government response to a hurricane in the last 50 years. And the one thing that the Harris-Biden administration can do from the, from the comfort of the White House is write a blank check to the families that need help, to the residents who were affected. They just gave Vladimir Zelensky from Ukraine $2.4 billion this week. How much have they provided the Americans impacted by Aline? Largely nothing. Peanuts, folks, just over $4 million as of Friday. And wait till you hear how this money's being dispersed. It'll make your blood boil. We have the video of them admitting what they're doing. They can't deny it anymore. But before we get started, thank you for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing so you don't miss these regular updates. So, so in the past, after devastating storms like Harvey or Katrina, the focus by this time, by day 11, after those storms, obviously had turned to rebuilding. But not here, not this time. We are still in the recovery phase of this response, being led by locals on the ground, by neighbors, family members, everyday people coming together to help volunteer response teams and state agencies. Because the Harris-Biden administration's lackluster response, seven days went by, folks, before FEMA was even set up on the ground. Today is day 11. And since FEMA's arrival, locals are reporting recovery efforts have gotten worse, not better, especially in North Carolina. Why? Why are locals saying it's worse now than it was last week? Because federal officials, they say, are purposely hindering the response effort, blocking shipments of critical goods into the impact zones. Now, most of these are just anecdotal reports, but there's a lot of them. Yesterday, multiple FEMA whistleblowers on the ground in North Carolina began coming forward, accusing the agency of negligence. And then Elon Musk posted this on X, saying he just received this note from a SpaceX engineer helping on the ground in North Carolina. FEMA, he says, is not merely failing to adequately help people in trouble, but is actively blocking citizens who try to help, writing, Hey, Elon, update here on site of Asheville, North Carolina. We've powered up two large operating bases for choppers to deliver goods into hands. We've deployed 300 plus Starlings, and outcome is it has saved many lives. The big issue, though, is FEMA actively blocking shipments and seizing goods and services locally and locking them away to state that they are their own. It's very real and scary how much they've taken control to stop people from helping. Now this video you're seeing, this video here was filmed by SpaceX engineers yesterday in North Carolina. That used to be the highway, folks. By the way, this entire region is some of the most beautiful country on the East Coast. The Smoky Mountains, the Cherokee National Forest, East Tennessee, Western North Carolina is just stunning country. And, and where is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? This is a national disaster, folks. They should be commanding FEMA from the Situation Room, deploying the National Guard if necessary. These are Americans in trouble here, stranded and in need of help. And the President of the United States for the last week was vacationing in Delaware, lounging on his private beach, while the Vice President Kamala Harris was campaigning and fundraising. Now, to be fair, after reporters began asking questions like, where the hell is the President? Joe Biden did make his way back to the White House. Here he is after returning from Delaware. Watch this. Do you expect Ron to retaliate? I'm a hurricane, Mr. President. Why weren't you and Vice President Harris here in Washington commanding this? This weekend. I was commanding. I was on the phone for at least two hours yesterday and the day before as well. I command. It's called a telephone. It's it all my security people. And look, when I say the federal government's been MIA, I mean it. It's been 11 full days. 
And there are still hundreds of families who have no answers. Countless people are stranded, even residents inside areas like Asheville, North Carolina, which is getting all the attention. We're still without basic essentials as of Friday, two days ago. Anyone who's stuck across the bridge over there may have no water, no food, no potable water at least. Kamala and Joe could order the National Guard to do airdrops. If you can't reach the communities on foot or by vehicle, they sure as hell can do an airdrop. They did it a few months ago in the Middle East, in Palestine, where they dropped these big pallets of essentials, including potable water. But they haven't. And in the wake of Harris Biden missing in action, Donald Trump stepped up and got down there by vehicle, which is important, and brought with him flatbeds of supplies, food, water, and a tanker filled with gasoline. Even CNN, of all outlets, had to report on how Donald Trump stepped up and filled the role as president. Watch this. He is being treated not just as a former president, but almost as though he is a sitting president. As Boris, you just noted, getting a briefing from FEMA, getting a briefing from the National Guard. That is not something that is typically just offered to a candidate. They are treating him as though he is a former president who is there to help. And one thing that I had noticed earlier during our 1 p.m. conversation was that Donald Trump did not have that much to offer in terms terms of resources since he is not a sitting president. But I will note that he and the campaign say that they have arrived in that area with trucks full of supplies that they plan on giving out. So there is something there for them to offer. He also said that he had a tanker truck full of gasoline, which obviously, if you've ever covered one of these storms, you understand that one of the first things and hardest things to come by is gasoline. So he said that he was going to be giving that out. He is clearly taking this seriously as a politician is on on the ground trying to show that he is there in support of the people on the ground in Georgia. And it turns out one of the reasons that FEMA's response and recovery has been so bad is because they are both out of money and overextended with the bulk of their resources stationed where? Guess where, folks? At the southern border. Multiple FEMA whistleblowers began leaking details about this last week. When the hurricane first hit, these FEMA employees, they've been sounding the alarm that the agency's basically out of money, will be out of money very soon, and won't be able to adequately respond during hurricane season. Well, Alejandro Mayorkas, the worst Homeland Security Secretary we've ever had, he came out and admitted it. Watch. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. And why do you think FEMA's out of money? We're not even halfway through hurricane season. Where the hell has the money gone? Well, the Harris-Biden administration has reportedly diverted $1.4 billion of FEMA's funds to address the migrant crisis that they created, divvying the $1.4 billion out to tens of millions of new undocumented migrants. 9000 bucks a piece each migrant gets used to pay for their hotels, their credit cards, their plane tickets, and everything else this administration pays for. And since this story broke last week, the White House has been in cleanup mode, trying to clean it up, denying, flat out denying that they used FEMA funds for the migrant crisis. Well, we have the tape, folks. Watch this. It's just categorically false. No, Biden did not take uh, FEMA relief uh, money to use, uh, to use on migrants. So FEMA regional administrators have been meeting with city officials on site to coordinate to coordinate available federal uh, support from FEMA and other uh, federal agencies. Funding is also available through FEMA's emergency food and shelter program to eligible local governments and non-for-profit non organizations upon request uh, to support humanitarian relief for migrants. Check this out. Feds say there is no money left to respond to hurricanes after FEMA spent $640 million on migrants. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas set off outrage on Wednesday when he told reporters at the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season and what is imminent. Now, the New York Post goes on and writes the Department of Homeland Security's allocated $640 million this year 
and FEMA administered funds to aid state and local governments coping with the influx of asylum seekers. DHS then allocated $780 million more for the migrant crisis last year through the FEMA Shelter and Services Program and the FEMA Emergency Food and Shelter Program, coming to around $1.4 billion. So let me get this straight. We've paid only $4 million to the families and the individuals affected by Hurricane Aline this week as of Friday for a hurricane that's already killed over 230 people. $4 million, folks. That's it. But Harris Biden just authorized another $2.4 billion, with a B, billion this week in Ukraine. And when Kamala Harris was asked about this, her response was awful. You probably saw it. She said, if you're affected by the hurricane, the federal government will help you. Go to their website, go to FEMA's website, submit the form, and we'll be able to send you $750. It's embarrassing. Watch. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going door to door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have electricity but also um, that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online, and I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify your address, and then the process should take um, hold. This is embarrassing. Americans who need help, real help, and that's all the federal government can muster up, 750 bucks after losing everything. That pisses me off. It should piss you off, too. They take 37% of our annual income, and they squander it, giving it away to Ukraine. Again, Joe Biden just signed off four days ago on another $2.4 billion. How about you give that money to the Americans who just lost everything? And if you notice where this is all happening, in Battleground, North Carolina, in Georgia, Florida, Donald Trump, he's, he's favored to win in these states, but not by much. The margins are close, super close, winning by just 70,000 votes in North Carolina in 2020. Well, how many people do you think have been affected and displaced by, by Helene? Will they be able to vote in 29 days? Republicans, they need to make damn sure every single person affected has the chance to cast their vote. All right, that wraps up this episode. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.